Hello everybody, this is Tim here again with another movie review, this time for Shang-Chi, the newest Marvel film. Now, this film's been out for a while, I haven't gotten around to really watching it until now. I kept putting it off because my wife wanted to watch it with me. Just to jump into this film, from one to four stars, I'd give it a solid two and a half. Uh, I'd give it a weak recommend. I liked this film, I didn't like, wasn't over the moon about it, I didn't love it, but I did like it. Um, it obviously is slightly weaker than average. This film is pretty much about like the Mandarin character who was the bad guy of Iron Man, or main villain of Iron Man in the comics, and they changed that in that movie, and make him Asian, they made him like some kind of joke or whatever in that one. Really bad, like portrayal in the comic course for feeling that, but even though I don't really hate Iron Man 3, I like it's a Robert Downey Jr. movie. They bring that character back here, you got the Mandarin back, uh, you've got Ben Kingsley back who poses the Mandarin in a cameo, uh, which wasn't really needed, like some of his jokes were kind of hit or miss, he wasn't really needed in the movie, but I warmed up to him by the end, with him being here. You got, like, the guy's son in the movie, and he's pretty much the star. He's going to end up getting, like, the, the Ten Ring magical abilities, which are these uh, devices or whatever that go on the dude's hand, the Mandarin guy's hand, who is the father of the main character, and it enables him to do magic, basically. He can fly, he can shoot the ground, fly, and shoot out big energy blasts, similar to Thor or whatever, but much more fantastical. Uh, that's one thing I will say. This is the most fantastical of all the Marvel films. Like, this really, by the end, just not feel like a Marvel film. It really feels like something really different. It feels like a action comedy fantasy flick, really. Um, that just happens to have ties to Marvel. This really could have just been its own movie, and I get that. They want to spice it up and bring new flavors into the Marvel Universe because it's been around so long now. There's been so many movies. Um, like with Black Widow, they tried to do like a spy thriller type thing, a little bit more serious, but that still felt more in the universal realm of standard Marvel. This feels much more like out there. I can see people like really hating this movie uh, for being so different than all the other Marvel movies by being more fantastical. Um, at the same time, I can also see somebody liking this movie because of that, if that's your personal style. Um, like I said, all together I'd give it a two and a half. You pretty much got this Asian dude in the movie who's the star. I think the actor's name is like Sam Samuel Liu, or maybe. Um, he does a good job uh, for his character. His character's not overly super interesting. Um, uh, Shang-Chi isn't. He's got, like, this love interest, though, who's really funny. It's like this party-type girl or whatever, and she just, he has all the cool humorous bits in the movie. And the dude's father wants to, like, rescue his mother, who he believes is trapped behind, like, this magical gate after she died or whatever her spirit. But we actually know, of course, if you've seen enough movies, that it's not really her. It's some kind of malevolent force. Malevolent force, I mean. Um, kind of at the end of the movie, it's this giant, like, demon dragon. Uh, this movie does feel overlong. It did feel a little bit ex uh, extraneous by the end. This big dragon creature shows up. They have like a big fight between him and Shang Chi. Didn't really need that. Uh, you could have just hidden it once behind the gate or whatever, and had it show up in the sequel and be the villain there. Um, the father in the movie he does a good job. He's pretty much trying to do the right things for the, or he's doing the wrong things for the right reasons. I mean, um, he does a good job in the film. Uh, I will say by the end though, it, it does hurt the movie not having like a main human villain. He should have been the villain. They should have done that by the end. Just had the son have to take him out and just take that big dragon creature for another movie. Because when it actually does show up, it makes the movie feel overlong, and it, and it just really has no personality because it's just a giant monster. It makes it feel more like a Lord of the Rings film or something, even more so than a fan, even more fantastical than what it already has been. Um, the big action scene at the end, though, is kind of cool. You got Shang-Chi flying on, like, this uh, water serpent type creature, or whatever. It's like, you know, like a water dragon or whatever. It's a dragon off, a dragon fight. It's kind of cool. Special effects are good. Uh, the humor in the film is good. You get some ninja fights. This has the best, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat action from any of the Marvel films. It's it's pretty good. Um, you've seen the fight scene clip from on the train or whatever. Shang Chi's like taking out a bunch of guys. It's a pretty cool fight scene. Um, by the end of the movie, his father like opens up his gate. The big creature comes out. He realizes he's fucked up. Uh, the creature pretty much sucks his soul out. He throws his magic rings to Shang Chi, his son. He takes them um, because pretty much the dad realizes that the son's the better man. Plot holes in the film though. Uh, there are some here. Like the whole thing about like how. Uh, the father of the Mandarin or whatever is like trying to tell his son like his wife and spirit is like trapped behind this gate and the son's like dad you know that's bullshit I don't believe in magic it's like what? your father's like a quasi immortal being and they keep trying to make the Shang-Chi character act like he doesn't really believe in magic shouldn't he be like open to that idea? like even when he's like exploring his father's temple or whatever there's like this little magical creature that runs out and he's like surprised to see it you would think if he grew up with his father he would know all about these different like magical beings so it's really weird that he's not at least a little more open to the fact that maybe my mom is behind that gate. Um, so that is a pretty big plot hole. Um, 
At the same time, though, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a two and a half out of four. This film is completely harmless. You don't really need to see it, but if you're somebody like me who's a completist and who just likes Marvel and likes the Marvel Cinematic Universe and wants to watch all the films, it's worth watching. Um, it is overlong, but if you've seen all the other films, it's worth watching. It's not worth, like, rushing out to see, though. I'm surprised this film's done as well as it has, because I don't think it's that good, but it's all right as a fantasy flick. But if you're not into fantasy films, then you may hate this one, like, more than any Marvel film. All in all, though, for what it is, which I feel like I have to judge it for what it is, as a fantasy action adventure film, action comedy, it's all right. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you